story behind these small, fast-moving bugs is one of mistaken identity and mysterious, sudden explosions in population. While Rutherglen bug has long been considered a pest of sunflowers, it's now moving into other summer crops, and very little is known about its ecology. So a GRDC investment has partnered CSIRO with New South Wales DPI and the University of Queensland to help industry better understand and manage this damaging pest. Dr Hazel Parry is a senior research scientist at CSIRO and the project lead. She recently joined agronomists from across northern New South Wales in Gunnedah, where they were dusting off their pest ID skills and hearing more about this native bug with exotic tastes. It seems to be really facilitated by weeds and, and other crops in the landscape, which it feeds on and reproduces. So it can build up populations in other parts of the landscape that then move into summer crops like sorghum and mung bean and, and can potentially be a pest. So it's understanding how and where it builds up in the landscape over time and, and the relationship between different crops and, and different plants in the landscape, particularly leafy weeds like Asteraceae, that we know are a key host. So how that happens and, and when, when it's likely to become a problem. Early in the research project, the team uncovered significant identity confusion between Rutherglen bug and its relatively harmless lookalike, the grey cluster bug. Saritza Durek is a field crop entomologist with New South Wales DPI. Rutherland bug and grey cluster bug uh, look very similar. On the other side, they are totally two different, genetically different species, very distant on phylogenetic tree. Uh, they look similar, they are similar size, colours, shape of body, everything is quite similar. However, Rutherland bug is a problem in summer crops, grey cluster bug is not. So, for control decisions, Correct identification is critical. Picking the subtle differences at both nymph and adult stages formed a core part of the Gunnedah agronomist's workshop. So adults, for example, uh, of grey cluster bug have golden hairs on pronotum, while uh, Rutherglen bug is smooth. And uh, adult, of course. Nymphs, uh, grey cluster bug nymphs, for example, have opposite V shape, uh, white V shape uh, uh, under their head, while Rutherglen bug uh, has only two dots, not V shape. As well as improved tools to identify Rutherglen bug, the project is developing a risk model to help forecast infestations, which Dr Parry is keen to test with agronomists. I think one of the things that we've learned is a much better understanding of what drives some of the, the quite sporadic population outbreaks that we've seen over the last decade or so and why generally it's increased in numbers and, and more frequent outbreaks. And we really didn't have much idea before this started other than, well, temperatures are generally a bit warmer with climate change. And the team has identified two key factors. Factor number one, the surrounding habitat, particularly canola stubble. From our observations in the field, we've seen, particularly during this project, that when you have canola stubble and canola trash left after harvest, populations of the bug really build up on that. And so we see that as potentially a really important driver for populations in the landscape. Factor number two, climate cycles. We also looked at the El Nino Southern Oscillation and so how switching from a summer that's say quite wet like with La Nina into a dry period um, which we're going into now how that might affect the risk and so what we found is that we're able to actually explain a lot of the variance about 60 percent just with those two factors pretty much. The project concludes mid-2024 but both Dr Durek and Dr Parry believe there are already significant learnings growers can heed about managing the risk of a Rutherglen bug infestation. So in order to be prepared for their mass movement, you need to first of all manage 
area around your crop because there are plenty of uh, plants that serve them as potential hosts where they can, could increase their numbers before they come into sorghum. There are a few other management options and we are working on some of them. We want to actually analyze if uh, digging uh, deep trenches will stop movement of uh, nymphs uh, from canola stubble into, uh, into sorghum. There are some other things including management of canola trash piles after harvesting. The usefulness of sprays is limited. There are options to use also insecticides, but those are broad uh, range insecticides which are not favorable to so many beneficials which are present in our surroundings. So uh, using uh, insecticides is not the best approach, and especially because rutiglin bug can often rain fist the same paddock coming from an uh, area which is not treated, for example. But with better understanding of the bug's ecology will come the ability to anticipate and act before there's a problem. So I think there's quite a lot of times when we can probably be fairly confident that there will be quite a low risk and certainly depending where you're located within a region as well and depending on the, the conditions going forward like with the El Nino and with the habitat that's around you. So to know your risk and then to the sort of actions that a, a grower might take then a, for example, they could plant sorghum as early as possible or a summer crop, and that would perhaps avoid coinciding with that peak population, which is around January, February, March time. So I think understanding those risks and potentially thinking ahead and acting accordingly is something that I hope will perhaps give the opportunity to, for growers to do going forward.